If I can help one, it's worth it. So I walked in, grabbed the mic, I told it. After I told it, Q&A. After Q&A, I saw no more hands, so I was ending it. Relieved it was finished, I was exiting. As I'm walking, this little girl in the front row tapped me on my leg and pointed me up to the top. At the top of the bleachers was a little girl with her hand up, sitting all by herself. So I started walking this way so I could hear her question. As I'm walking, kids are shifting in their seats. They want to see who has the question. When they spot the girl at the top, it became disruptive. Kids started laughing at her, making fun of her, and telling her, put your hand out. So that little girl, who had more courage and guts than I ever had, that little girl dropped her hand, turned red, and said, see, Mr. Heron, at my high school, it's not even worth asking questions. Because at the end of the day, nobody cares anyway. So I ended it. But I felt I failed her. I tried to find her. I couldn't. And I walked out wondering. And I thank God that that little girl had the courage to send it two months later. Dear Mr. Heron, I was the girl with her hand up. I didn't have a question that day. For the first time in my life, I wanted to tell my story. Mr. Heron, my father's a drunk. He's an alcoholic. He has been my whole life. My mom, she suffers from depression. But my father's drinking caused him to lose his job four years ago. And for the last four years of high school, I've had to wear the same exact clothes every day. And what you wear to high school as a senior, a girl, it matters. And I can tell you, I'm the furthest thing from a pretty girl. I've been battling being ugly since I was a little kid. What I don't understand is why I have to battle kids in my high school because of it. For some reason, Mr. Heron, they like to take pictures of me, Snapchat, record me, and laugh at me. And for the last four years, I've gone home from high school by myself with no friends. And for the last four years, my father's drunk on the couch. My mom is upstairs in her bedroom with the door closed. So Mr. Heron, I go to my bedroom, I lock my door, I put my music on, I take my homework out. And I do the one thing, the one thing that's helped me through my day. I roll up my sleeve, I grab a couple of razor blades. And I cut myself really bad. I'm a cutter, Mr. Heron. I'm scarred from my wrist to my biceps on both arms. But I want you to know that you walked into my high school that day and you said one kid. I promise you I'll be that kid. Because right after the assembly, you gave me the confidence to confront it. So I walked into the cafeteria and I sat down at the cool kids table. When the whole cafeteria saw me sitting at their table, they started making fun of me, telling me I don't belong and I should get up. For the first time in my life, I stood my ground. And as soon as that whole table sat down, I rolled up my sleeves and I showed them all my scars. I said, look what you've done to me. You don't even know me, but you make fun of me. You have no idea what I've been through. It's not my fault my father's a drunk. I walk into this high school every day embarrassed, humiliated about what I'm wearing and how I look. I hope making fun of me, laughing, has helped you over the last four years. Because I wanted to show you how much it's hurt me. She said, since that day, Mr. Heron, those kids have never said another word to me. They don't post pictures, they don't laugh, and some have had the decency and courage to approach me and say sorry to me. So I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart coming to my high school and making a difference in that one kid's life. That little girl sends me an email every 30 days. 